Hi guys, welcome to Snakes and Adders. Today we're going to recover a subject that we've already done, but I had to do it without an example to show you, which is always a shame, and I like to revisit these videos when I can to be able to illustrate species, uh, particularly this one, which is probably one of my firm favourite genuses of all the snakes, particularly for beginners. Why? Well, simply because it was my first species of snake, this and its cousin. This is a diamondback water snake, and today we're going to dis uh, discuss the genus Nerodia. So, Nerodia belongs to the subfamily Natricini, and in, within that family, there are Natrix, which is grass snakes, and Viperine snakes, and Dice snakes, which we have in Europe. There's Tamnophis, which is the garter and ribbon snakes, which I've also had a video done here. Regina, which are the crayfish snakes. Storeria, which are the brown snakes, like such as Decay's brown snake. Xenocrophis, which are the keelbacks from Indonesia, which have got quite a potent uh, kick to their rear fang venom. Uh, plus 23 other genera. So it's a big old group, Natricini, Nerodia. Uh, was first described in its current form by Baird and Girard in 1853 and there it has remained. Previously he, uh, they were listed within Kaluba by Linnaeus in 1758, in, by, in Natrix by Laurenti in 1768 and Notis by Cool in 1824. But they ended up in Nerodia. They're a highly variable group. Now some will reach as little as 30 inches. Others may be upwards of nearly five feet long. Somewhere in between most of them reside, which is between three and four feet in length. Um, one of the bigger species is such as this, which is a diamondback water snake, which is Nerodia rhombifer. And then the largest of the group is the brown water snake, which is Nerodia taxbeloita. Bronze medal, bringing up the rear, is the green water snake, which is Nerodia cyclopion. So one of the other smaller species that you may encounter, may being the operative word, these are an old school group of snakes. These used to be dead popular when I first started. My first snake cost me 20 quid. It was a common water snake, Nerodia sipidon. And my second species of snake was this, which is a, a, a diamondback, which is rhombifer. Um, they're very, very hard to come by. Um, should be snapped up. They're amazing snakes, super cool. But I'll get back to what I was saying. One of the smaller species that you may find, which would be the common water snakes, which is Nerodius uh, sipidon, which there's four subspecies. The banded water snake, which is Nerodia fasciata, which is three subspecies. Plain belly water snake, which is Nerodia erythrogaster, which has got six subspecies. Or the salt marsh water snake, which is Nerodia clarki, which has got three subspecies. The likelihood of you finding the latter two is incredibly low and there are other species as well but it's pointless me listing them simply because in 27 years I've never seen them in the hobby and I'm pretty active in the hobby so if they've escaped my gaze particularly with how much I love them uh, they're doing very well or either that or they're just kept in absolutely minuscule numbers and the dreams of getting them would be relatively low. The diamondbacks are probably one of the most boldly patterned um, the one of the larger ones, they're easier to acclimatise, so they tend to be found relatively uh, easily for the group. That's not to say that they're an easy snake to find, but as far as the Neurodias go, this is probably the one that you'll come across. Um, in the wild, they predominantly feed on fish and amphibians, although they can also take crayfish, reptiles and rodents, the latter two particularly for the larger species. So, if captive bred, many of them can be weaned onto scented or unscented rodents, depending on their size and their willingness to feed. This guy, for example, is still small, but it's willing to take completely unscented fuzzies off tongs with no drama, no faff. What we will say is that care must be taken not to make your snake obese. Um, with them taking the, the amphibians and the, the fish as part of their natural diet and having a very fast metabolism, the mice prove to be quite a heavy diet they will gain weight they will grow fast so let's just keep an eye on their weight gain make sure they don't become too portly let's try and offer them a varied diet we can also offer them chunks of fish that does not contain thiaminase so we don't want to create a vitamin b1 deficiency so we could use chunks of cod bass flounder perch trout or tilapia and if you wanted to use live whole fish you could use guppies and mollies particularly for the smaller snakes 
So a balanced and mixed diet would be recommended. We could also order frog's, line, uh, frog's legs from European wholesaler outlets, um, which will arrive frozen and you can defrost for use. Um, we could use that for larger animals. We can also use night crawlers or earthworms, which are the dendrobina worms for babies. Uh, for, as far as breeding goes, water snakes are live bearers. They're capable of prodigious litters with numbers reaching 50, 60, 70 young in a single litter. I mean, it's, it's unreal how prolific these snakes could be. They will require a decent brumation period, a wintering off, a cooling down. They are generally more from the southern states, uh, but they would still require some sort of cycling period. Uh, the females are far larger than the males. Interesting fact about the diamondbacks, the males have got these weird bumpy nodules on their chin. We're still not 100% clear what they're for, but that's one of the identifying marks for the diamondbacks. If your boy's got warts under the chin, that's a sign it's, it's, it's a boy. The girls will have just plain flat polished scales like any other snake. If handled regularly from birth, they can become totally tame, totally trustworthy. My diamondback water snake, Lennon, back in 1992 was a three and a half foot uh, male heavy built and was as good as gold but then I put him through brumation he came out the other side and he was a psychopath it's it's a weird one um, he wasn't captive bred he was wild caught as was everything back then pretty much so these guys once we can get the captive bred going and get the numbers up you will find that with each subsequent generation and regular handling, we can develop totally tame, totally trustworthy, wonderfully interesting animals. These have got a very different sensation when they're handled because their scales are so incredibly rough. Every scale has got a very, very strong keel. It gives them a very rough complexion. And this is helpful when you're trying to eat slippery things like fish and amphibians. So nature's always got a plan. Viv size, they're not going to need a huge viv, three to four foot tank. We could use a heat pad or we could use um, a ceramic bulb on a thermostat, upper basking temperature of 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, and they must be able to cool down from that. Then we must have adequate ventilation in this tank, even though these are a semi-aquatic snake that live near permanent sources of water. We know that if we keep them in permanently damp and muggy situations in captivity, they will blister and develop fungal problems in the skin. So we must be allowed to dry out completely when they leave the water. They need a bowl that they can soak in, but they must be able to dry out. This is incredibly important. Do your research on this group. They are ace. I think they um, are going to come into their zenith. We've got guys like Stephen Boll over in Europe who's producing them and bringing them over to the expositions and the shows and things and it's just, it's just great so um, let's try and develop the numbers have a research really search for them to illustrate the point I shared the photo of this snake it sold within 20 minutes and it's going to the other end of the country they are in demand so don't miss out if you see the opportunity to keep one you will not regret it they are fantastic Keep watching the videos. I'm sorry that I've not been producing as many as I had. We are simply too busy with the shop and that's had to take precedence. I've squeezed the video in today. I hope it's of use. Visit the website which is www.snakesnaders.co.uk to see what we're all about and to see some of the fabulous stock that we have in currently. Cheers guys. Bye.